for 125 uh, uh, contests, 125 uh, games. There are the officials tonight, Rucker, Rhoda Heifer, and Drury. And it'll be awarded to Wisconsin out of bounds off the tip. There you see Steve Yoder, who has already announced his resignation as the Wisconsin basketball coach, effective April 1st. So he'll finish out the, the season here, and then that'll be it. This is Webster, and Meeks right on him. He's the one that can trigger a lot of the offense for Wisconsin. Billy Douglas. There goes Webster on the drive, dishes it off. Douglas back up to the top of the key. Findlay, another strong guard at 6-6 and a freshman. And there's Findlay on the drive. Indiana playing some pretty good defense to start this game. Findlay with three, and he connects from outside. Now, the first time we saw Wisconsin, Findlay was playing in the forward position. They've switched in the guard recently, and he's now the second leading scorer on the team, 12 and a half a game. So Indiana trails early, 3-0. Cheney handling for the first time. Anderson backs it out. Bailey releases to Meeks. Indiana trying to run some offense. Out to Anderson handling for the first time. It's Meeks to Bailey. Room for the shot, but it's blocked. He was heavily contested on there and still put the shot up. This is Webster. So Indiana trailing with no shot to the basket as yet. They're giving Wisconsin an opportunity to take a five-point lead as Finley has hit once again. At six foot six, he's got good range. He handles the ball well. Henderson was on him that time, and Finley just got in position to get the shot away. There's a quick turnaround. As Alan Henderson, who has been the stalwart for Indiana in about the last three games last. He really has. Only a freshman. He, he's overcome that sickness and really come through here in the clutch. He's had a great first year here at Indiana. Douglas with Cheney fronting him. Now Eli comes out. Here's Finley moving on Meeks. Jamal with some good defense there. Eli gets it right back, puts it up on the hit. So they've taken three shots and hit all three. Wisconsin 7, Indiana 2 in the first two and a half minutes here at Assembly Hall. A fall away, well off the mark by Cheney. Here's the upcourt pass deflected right back into the hands of Meeks by Anderson. Good heads up play by Anderson. He just peeked over his shoulder and saw that ball coming. And chases it out of bounds. It's going to be Wisconsin ball. Damon Bailey a little out of control that time as he tried to make something happen. I mean, it's encouraging to see Damon trying to get the things to go whether it's he himself scoring or whether he's dishing the ball off he just lost control there out of bounds 7-2 in the early going here in the first half of assembly hall final home game of the season for indiana wisconsin would love to tag a victory or a w opposite this game in the record books to let steve yoder go out and find fashion that shot well off the mark by peterson Here's Meeks. Jamal gets it right back. What's Jamal's role tonight? He's got to set his teammates up, but not make passes like yep. that. No chance for Henderson to get that ball. Douglas on the three-on-one break, and Meeks has to go over, defend the loose man. Eli is fouled, and Meeks has picked up the first foul of the game. You see Jamal really trying to make things happen. Now all he can do is get back on defense. He comes back over on Eli, and there's the bump. Not in the act of shooting, so out of bounds to Wisconsin. Interesting statistic here. Wisconsin just 37% from the field in their last three games. Tonight, 75% already. There's a shot rejected. Here's Cheney. I think Damon's got to be ready to take that shot. He's He's got to get some early shots, get right into the flow of the game. There's a step up. Cheney's shot is blocked. We have a foul. Rucker comes out to make the call, and I believe they're going to flag that on Finley. Let's wait to see. It is his first and Wisconsin's first team foul. Okay, and that wasn't a real good shot by Cheney. He kind of had to double pump that ball to get the shot away. He might have been lucky to, to draw that foul. Well, you know, sometimes, last. now let me just add this as an outsider's view. 
I think sometimes these kids get caught up in that pumping syndrome. And a lot of times, uh, in that particular case, it appeared that Cheney really had his man beaten off the floor. He could have gone ahead and taken it on the up. Well, I think a lot of times players will do that when they feel that the shot has a good chance to be blocked. And so they try to delay the shot okay. so they can get it away, which uh, to me means it probably wasn't a good shot in the first place right. that they go ahead and take it. Now, whether or not that's what Calvert was doing there, I'm not sure. But uh, regardless, he did get fouled and was able to hit the free throws. Douglas off the wing. There's Bailey right on him. Now, Winster. Good switch by Indiana and a whistle and a turnover. We have reached the 16 minute mark. 16 to go, first half. Indiana trails 7 to 4, and we'll be back after these messages. Master, look, <laughs> this is the boy I see here. It's remind you that this broadcast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference is prohibited. Second buzzer sounds. Indiana will have control of the ball on the far side as Meeks brings it across. Indiana tries to set an offense. Anderson all alone. And that shot, much better shot, but a little bit short that time. And we have a foul backcourt called against Indiana on the transition. One of the things Damon Bailey's got to be careful of, Chuck, is uh, silly fouls like that. We mentioned that he lost that ball out of bounds early. He hasn't really gotten a shot away yet. And now a defensive mistake. He seems to snowball the wrong way. Damon's got to uh, keep himself in the ball game, make some good plays, and get that uptick going, uh, which we've been so familiar with. Peterson, Finley. They play a lot of motion, Wisconsin does. They have a big man, Peterson. Here's Finley from outside, and that's three more. As Finley hits for his eighth point. I was going to say Peterson is 6'10", but they do a lot of motion off him last. But their scoring comes from the guards, and Finley at 35% from that three-point range has got two tonight already. Indiana has not been able to make an entry. There's an entry. It goes to Henderson, and it's not going to fall. It took a hard bounce off the rim, but he does draw the foul. You're exactly right, Chuck. Indiana has not been able to get that ball on the inside, and uh, that'll be up to Henderson and, and uh, Anderson, really, to set some picks inside so they can get open. Let Cheney roam around outside and try to get his shot. Now Greg Graham will check in the lineup for Damon. So Graham, again, that slashing type of cut that he takes can also help the offense, and that's what Indiana needs right now, although the defense giving up already 10 points, not even five minutes in the game. We talked a lot about Allen Henderson, the games that you and I have had a chance to see this season, but uh, the young man is certainly a bright spot being a freshman, the way he has matured and grown into the system. He's got a nice, soft jump shot. He's a good rebounder. Really look for good things out of him these next three years. Ten to six. Indiana trails by four as Billy Douglas handles to Eli. Now Webster threatens the three. And a reach in right across the wrist. And Graham hasn't been in the game 30 seconds, commits his first foul. He's got the right idea to try to steal that ball, but he was a little out of position. That was kind of a silly foul, too. right? You can tell by the expression on Coach Knight's face, he's not happy with just that slap on defense. Douglas looking, looking, and time has expired. Five seconds. Third, third turnover now for Wisconsin. And Indiana needs plays like that. Steve Yoder now a little concerned. He had that 10-4 lead. Indiana's cut to four with a chance to cut it more now. Cheney for three. That's off the mark. Rebound to Finley. Finley just plays all over this court. Drops it back, lays it to Webster for three. That's hard off the rim. Henderson on a quick step out. He's going to lead the attack. Drops it to Meeks. Blocked. Good defensive move and position by Wisconsin on that play. Well, this Finley is just something. Off the rim, no. And over the back, that foul is going to be called on Peterson. As once again, Henderson there with excellent board position. He does a great job of that. And how about him getting that rebound, dribbling the length of the floor, and then dishing off as the defense came to him. But Jamal not able to get the shot away without getting it blocked. Bailey back in for Indiana. 
And uh, substitution, Grant Johnson replaces Peterson Johnson, a seven-foot sophomore from Plymouth, Minnesota, replacing Peterson. Well, Indiana just shooting 36% from the field last Sunday, and that explains itself. Tonight, they're one of six, and that's not even as good. Well, I think we talked about the mental preparation. That all uh, comes to play. As, uh, that's a good shot for Henderson, yet it just rims out. Webster, we're still 10-6. Wisconsin with a four-point lead. Wisconsin at this moment are very content to play a system. Webster moves past Bailey, tipped away. Good hands by Eli, makes the save, and the rebound by Grant. Now Indiana, a chance to pull within two. Knocked out of his hand. That was Finley again with the block. This guy's having a career game right now. Here's Douglas. Look at Graham really hawking there on Douglas, though. Knocked out of bounds by Graham. Well, that's, a, that's a highlight film on defense. You see how he moved his feet so well that time, laterally, and really a, a, didn't let the uh, Wisconsin players penetrate inside. Steve Yoder really a, a look of concern now, although his team still has that lead. 32 is Carlton McGee. He has just checked in for Wisconsin. Another good example, too. There's Graham caught off on the shoulder again, but Indiana's health is right back again. This time, however, Johnson works inside. And Grant Johnson with his first two as Indiana lost its block out. Yeah, can't give up that position. He's 7 foot 240, and that's an easy play for him. Wisconsin doubles the score on Indiana. Feet underneath. Back out to Bailey for three. No. Anderson with the rebound. Anderson again, he'll fire, it's got to go, there it is. <laughs> he talked that one right in. He's taking good shots, and that time it got, it got the break. Ron Felling worked for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours with Eric last night, trying to reposition his hand on shooting last. And uh, let's just see if it paid off. You can't be afraid to take that shot. When he's open day, he's got to fire it up. McGee gives it up. Here's Finley driving past Bailey. Good block by Henderson, but I think they got him for a foul. Yeah, it is. On Henderson, his first. Watch the quickness now of Finley as he drives to the right. Henderson tries to come help, but Finley with a good uh, leap there is able to draw the foul. Shell replaces Douglas for Wisconsin. Jay Shell, number 25, a 6'6 senior from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. He's a transfer. He came in from Bradley. Looks like Steve Yoder is going to try to use the bench a lot to keep players fresh. This team, uh, two days after his announcement that he would not be coaching next year, went out and beat Michigan. As you see Mike Finley, 18 points a game his last five. But they've really kind of been in a lull since then. Uh, haven't really seen the spark that's needed to win games, and they haven't won a game since that Michigan victory. Finley misses the second. Cleared by Henderson. He already has, I think, unofficially four rebounds. Back over Graham. That's off the mark. And tipped away right into the hands of Henderson. Good effort by Damon Bailey out of bounds to the Hoosiers. That's right, Chuck. That's a little play, but Damon tips it to Henderson for an Indiana possession. 11.59, just under 12 minutes left to play. We have a timeout. Indiana trails 8-13. Back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. And uh, leading leadership of uh, this crowd of 17,000. There's the shooting percentages. Two out of 10 for Indiana, just 20%. Just not, uh, not the same team we've seen no. so many times this year, Chuck. They seem to be a little uh, listless in the start of today's ball game. Sid Rota ever calls it out of bounds, Wisconsin, after a block as Cheney challenged or uh, Henderson challenged the inside and Coach came up zero. He didn't agree with that call either. It looked like Henderson got it blocked out of bounds, but they said it went off Henderson to get possession of Wisconsin. Webster, this is McGee, back to Finley, and a whistle and a travel. Wisconsin really very vulnerable to unforced turnovers, Laz. 
Uh, we noticed that up there at Madison, and uh, that's got to be very, very frustrating. He's not happy there. Hey, let, uh, let uh, Sid Rota have for no. He didn't like that call. Four now for Wisconsin. Indiana's got to get that spark going on offense. Anderson misses, comes up short. Here's Webster. So the Hoosiers down by five. And you're right, Laz. They just got to get something going. McGee turns right back into Baylor. A steal that leads to a fast break is probably uh, something Indiana's looking for right now. Graham gives it up instead of turnover. Shell, he's good from three. Great block by Henderson. Right back to Webster. Johnson will not shoot from there. Webster's really been kept under control. First by Meeks, now Graham. And then he throws that up there. Webster's first field goal. He averages 17 and a half. And the Badgers are taking it to Indiana. 10 minutes, 25 seconds left in the first half. It's 15 8. Off the glass. That's, That's gold thing. Gold thing, right? That was Tommy Rucker outside. That's his call. Once that ball hits the glass, you can't touch it. See if we can pick that up on the replay. Good feed here. Look at Reynolds with the bounce pass away from the defense. Anderson's got it there. It's on the glass, and Eli with the block. Cheney is back in replacing Bailey for Indiana with 10 minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the first period. Look at Reynolds. That's a big plus there, picking up a three-quarter court. Somebody's got to make something exciting happen here for Indiana. No shot. Good defense by Anderson as Shell had run well past the basket. Now Johnson backing Anderson down, taking a post position, but they can't get the ball to him. There's a soft shot tipped over into the hands of Reynolds. Here comes Indiana. And once again, Graham loses the ball. A push by McGee and no call. Jump ball. So it's going to be Indiana ball. Indiana didn't spread the nope. fast break, didn't uh, fill the lanes. They as were too close together. As a matter of fact, it was a lane fast break. They had a man on each side of the lane right down the middle. You could have covered him with a blanket. All right, no way to get the shot that way. Greg Graham comes out. Jamal Meeks back in. It'd be great to see Jamal be the one to uh, spur this team on right here. That would be a great tribute to him in his last game here. Cheney for three. Nope. Not going to go. On the line, Indiana ball. So the Hoosiers getting every break you can imagine. And with each shot that's taken like that, that 20% shooting percentage keeps going down. And this has been a great offensive team, averaging 84 points a game, except in these last two games. And in fact, the last two games Indiana's played have been their lowest scoring games of the year. Meeks for three! That's what we needed. We talked in the pregame about uh, Jamal Meeks being able to make that three-point shot, and now all of a sudden Indiana's only down two points. Billy Douglas with a post speed. Johnson, near steal by Henderson, into the hands of Meeks. Here's the steal and the break. Feed, Cheney for the slam. We're tied at 15. That's all it takes. A couple steals, a couple quick baskets, and Jamal Meeks again with a good pass inside. Time and out. Wisconsin wants timeout. 8.55 left, first period. Tied at 15. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Assembly Hall scored tied as we watch what happens when the transition develops off the fast break. And Henderson's got good hands on the ball. It forces the turnover. Meeks comes down. Watch a tough pass here into Reynolds. And here's the tricky one. He gets uh, Finley to commit and gets the lead to Cheney for the stuff, and that ties the game up at 15. Indiana's outscored Wisconsin 7 nothing in the last minute 30, and it's been two turnovers that have led to scoring. Indiana, by the way, this year is 13-0 at Assembly Hall. They have not lost a game, and a win today would keep that record perfect this year at 14-0. Indiana, there's a good step out by Matt Nover. Uh, in Indiana lineup now, stopping that weave across the top. There's the step out again. That just disrupts whatever they might be trying to plan off the weave. A back cut. Eli blocked away. Here okay. comes the defense, much yeah. more aggressive. You can see as the tempo starts to pick up for Indiana. And Nover backs it out to Cheney. Nover waits. Gets it off the rim, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line. And the offense is picked yep. up. You can just see the emotion. 
wait a minute, what are they calling here? Here's Cheney with a pass. It's got to be traveling. Well, it has to be traveling. It is. There you see Rota have front of the basket right. calling the travel. Everybody assumed he'd be going to the line. I did too. Look at Coach Knight. He agrees. There's Rodehef for the man who made the call right there. Douglas with a fall away as Indiana's defense breaks down. Billy Douglas has his first two. Well, there you see the tide of this game turned so quickly instead of Indiana getting the free throws. Wisconsin comes down and gets the score. Back out to Meeks. Indiana's getting some entry passes now. There's an entry. There's another one. Up, off the glass, it's good. Check it. Uh, they're going to count it, I believe. Yes, Rhoda Heffer makes the call, and Finley has picked up the foul, his second. You can see how one pass to the inside leads easily to the second because the defense is vulnerable when you get that ball inside. As the defense comes to help, you dump back to that guy. This time it was Nova. And Indiana takes its first lead as Nova makes it a three-point play. 18-17, seven and a half left in the first period. Webster. Webster's been quiet. Now Reynolds has been on him, so Indiana doing a great job of pressuring Wisconsin's leading score. Webster for three. And just the minute you said that, he hits for his fifth point. 2018 Wisconsin, so the Badgers who played Indiana pretty tough up there at Madison. Took a while for Indiana to pull away. Webster, by the way, is the fourth leading three-point shooter in the country. He shoots 50%, so not unusual for him to take that outside shot. Nover, ah, that's good range for Nover. 14 feet is just an ideal position for Matt outside. See, that's a good play because he got called for the traveling. Then the next time down he got the basket, here he gets another one, so he didn't let that traveling call bother him. Finley giving that move. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Reynolds giving up that move. Here's Webster for three more. That's off the glass. Pulled down by Henderson. Off the rim, rather. Entry to Nover again. Back out. Indiana has stacked its offense pretty low, Laz. There's a fall away. And, and there's a bump. That's got to be a foul. That'll go against Eli. Lewis Eli, his first. With Reynolds and Meeks in the game, Chuck, at the guard position, Indiana's looking to score from the inside with their big men, as Anderson's going to check in the lineup now. So it's, it's only natural that the offense be closer to the basket. See, Peterson checks in, but Henderson really fought tough for that rebound. He's going to come out for a break. But probably Indiana's most consistent player in the last three or four games, Allen Henderson. Cheney. Kicks it back on top. Here's Nover. Fall away. Two more. How about that? He's got three in a row. And Indiana gets the two-point lead again. Webster. Hard man to guard. Dive by Cheney. Finley. Great feed to Peterson. Block. Back up. Off the rim. Anderson. Three on the way, Reynolds. Oh, my! Only two. He had a foot on the line. Took an extra little half step to gather himself. It cost him a point, but you'd rather see him get set. And Indiana leads by four. Douglas. His mother is here tonight. I don't know if his dad is or not. His dad, the former Chicago Bears quarterback, Bobby Douglas. Indiana's defense has really settled down now. Finley is not getting the shots he did early in the ball game, and there's a travel. They move that pivot foot. So Eli with a costly, sorry, uh, McGee, I'm sorry, with a costly mistake there as you look at the general. Knight's record against Wisconsin is 37 and 4. Very enviable. And that 24 victories in a row, that's, uh, that's just that's amazing. amazing. As Indiana's starting to hit their shots now, seven out of eight. Uh, seven of the last eight they've taken. Meeks, and there's a hands-on by McGee. That's going to go as uh, they have now committed personal foul number six. McGee with his first. So Indiana getting into uh, 
an advantageous position foul wise. There's the entry and a trap. Yeah, you see it all the way from up here. Yep. You get the ball in the post where you want it, but you end up with your sixth turnover. When you uh, when you're able to sit in the press box and make the call before the official's whistle gets back <laughs> that, to you, that, then you know it's pretty obvious, yeah. right? Four minutes, 35 seconds and counting as Webster gets a shoulder by. Dishes back on top to Douglas. Tipped up. Feedback. Finley. Indiana with fairly good defense, although they gave up the board. Oh, there's three by Webster. You just don't give him breathing room, last. No, not from that three-point line. He had time to set up and gets him right back in the game. 24-23. Hoosier lead is one. As we're nearing the four-minute mark. Graham, and it's not going to fall. And a slap. And uh, I don't think, well, it's hard to tell whether or not he got any body, but they're going to call that on Nover, his first. Indiana still having trouble with that shooting percentage. They're getting good shots, but that ball just not dropping today, and that leads to the foul. Well, bad shooting, Laz, is a lot like bad golf. Uh, once you get in the habit, uh, you may be technically correct, but it's just not going to work for you until all of a sudden you break through and you get the skill and the technique and the optimism all working together. What do you know about bad golf? <laughs> I've seen your swing. What do I know about? <laughs> Good defense by Indiana. Here's Douglas, a little give and go. And Finley hey. has it taken away by Graham. Watch from behind. Exactly what Graham did. Snuck up from behind. There's no way that pass can go nope. in there. No, nope. Bad decision by Reynolds. And Finley threw it away. Well, that's says, see, there's a break for Indiana. We have a timeout. Cheney and Shell back in for their respective teams. The score, 24-23 Indiana. Back after these messages, this is the Raycom Sports Network. As uh, you and I were talking in the break, it's, I can't ever remember that Indiana has had such a struggle with shooting uh, in the 21 years with Coach Knight. Yeah, it's, Coach. A, it's a good shooting team. They're still over 50% for the year with these last two ball games that have been so poor and not much better today at 9 of 22 at 41. Better than Michigan game, but still well below the average. I mean, shots like that, yep. uh, yep. they're automatic. Can't seem to go down now. Uh, looking down at the bench, Bob Knight is just looking up at the bottom of the scoreboard. Douglas. Look at that steal. Good great, defense. great defense there. Hey, listen, if he's going to do it, let him do it. That's Jamal a three-pointer. Coming down on a fast break, taking a three-pointer. That's a senior shot right there. Jamal with the switch. It was okay because Webster picked up his dribble. Yeah. He couldn't go anywhere, and he's a little too far out to take that shot. Look at Nover stepping out. The defense is picking up now. Outside and high in the air. Look at Cheney go up. Fights for the ball and takes it out. That last shot was taken by Jay Shell. Good outside shoot. The pass wasn't there. Nover did a great job to save it. Cheney. No, it's not going to go. And a foul. And Douglas reaching across Anderson. Picks up his first foul. That'll be free throws. Indiana has not been to the free throw line as many times in the last few games. Iowa, they didn't go a lot. Well, it's taken them 18 minutes to get there tonight, Les. Or Michigan. And uh, great overall record, of course, for Coach Knight. But still a little puzzlement there as to how to get this team scoring more points. Anderson making his first appearance in the stripe. And I said the first time there tonight, first time on the one and one. Nover had been there before and uh, hit a free throw, a three point play. So Anderson hits both these for six. And it's a six point Indiana lead, 29 23, with a minute 52 left to play. Free throw, free throw, free throw. 
And there's a bump. They call that on Meeks, and that looked like that was just uh, who's going to get there first, and how's the official going to call it? Webster's very quick, and Jamal's got to keep those feet moving. Let's see from this angle what happens. See, Jamal's looking. He reached right there with the hand. Now, he might have got pushed out by the elbow, but he reached in with that left hand first to draw the foul. Bailey out. Henderson back in. As Indiana with a six point lead would certainly like to extend upon that before halftime. Shell. Another step out by Nover and a switch. And the hand up underneath, they did a good job. Uh, Wisconsin did a dropping or sagging down through the lane, and uh, the pass went right into the hands of McGee, and he draws the foul. It's a young team that uh, Steve Yoder has. The only senior, Billy Douglas, two sophomores and a freshman, as Yoder finishes up his 10th year. But these kids really have some uh, good potential, I feel, with Webster out there to lead them, and with Finley playing uh, a tough position. That's quite a guard combination with those two guys out there. McGee is the worst free throw shooter on the team, 55 percent. Well, I'll take that back. Grant Johnson, 54 percent. So they've had their troubles at the line, too. Here's the second up, but it's good. And McGee has his first point. 29-24, less than a minute and a half. You see the time. Box. Big lineup now for Indiana. Jamal Meeks, the only guard with four big men. And he tried, it was hard to tell whether it was going to be a shot or tried to feed Cheney. Cheney tried to get a hand up after the ball. But, uh, plays like that can really be costly, Laz, when you're not playing well. All right, not a good shot. Indiana will still get another possession, though. Inside a minute. Douglas. A lot of potential three point shooters on the Wisconsin team. This one with the ball, the best. 63 of 134 coming into this game. 67 of 134. Douglas off the rim, no good. Once again, Indiana caught behind the play, giving up the rebound position and the eventual foul. Just can't do that at this level of play. Watch McGee's on the inside, and so is uh, Eli. It really, really looked like they were blocking Indiana out. Foul by Anderson. Eli. Lewis Eli from Harvey, Illinois. 6'7 junior. Reynolds replaces Henderson for Indiana. Eli, a 58% shooter from the strike, gets three rebounds a game. This takes a deep bound into the hands of Douglas. Now that hurts because the clock right. is off now. And uh, I just mentioned Indiana to get the last shot. They may not now, as Wisconsin can hold the ball. Webster, he likes to penetrate just like that. And there's the slam dunk by Eli, as again, Indiana gives up the blockout. Tipped away Indiana ball with two seconds remaining. Maybe time for a shot. That's be a quick shot. As soon as the uh, ball comes in, whoever gets it's got to take the shot. Cheney. And the shot is awry, and we've come to the end of the first half. Well, it hasn't been anything really to cheer about. It's right now just a two-point margin. As you look at Bob Knight, greatly concerned and perturbed over the way his team is playing. The end of the first period with the score, Indiana 29. Wisconsin 27. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by 40%. You can shoot 30% in a game, and it'll maybe only drop a percentage point, but it still has to be a great concern to it. And you know this team can shoot. They've, they've shown that in the first part of the season, so it's not the, uh, the inability to score. It must be the bad shots that they're taking or, or the lack of concentration, one of the two, and those are just mental things that can be worked out. We talked about that mental preparation. So Coach has had some time now at the half, He's back with uh, the starting lineup, except for Matt Nover, who's in in place of Henderson. 
Fans wanted to travel there. Indiana opened the game with pressure out at midcourt on all the players, and they apparently are going to try to extend the defense against this team. There's a good opportunity as Douglas' shot goes awry over to Meeks on the transition. Meeks tries to make an entry to Nover. Nover goes and screens away. Meeks all alone. They back up. Finley did. Meeks could have taken the shot, but he's too disciplined to take it. Anderson behind an over screen back to Meeks. Now Bailey. Cheney. They want to try to get it down to him. That was a near steal by Wisconsin. Meeks lets that one fly. And it's not going to fall as Eli pulls it away. That was well off the mark. Finley stretched out there to really put the bother on Jamal with that shot. Cheney just one of eight in that first half. So he seemed to be getting his shots, but just couldn't get him to go down. Wisconsin with the ball in their own offensive end of the court. And the game back to Douglas as we've played a minute. Second half, 29-27, neither team has scored in this period. Webster, real threat. McGee threatens the shot as well. Now Douglas, a lot of good shooters in there right now. And up off the glass goes Carlton McGee for his first field goal. Too easy on that, in, uh, that pass inside. Indiana had that four-point lead here in the first half, but it's down uh, to a tie ball game right now. Bailey, very ineffective from the field. And so he's not looking for a shot out there. Cheney, back, falls away. Nover, right back to the glass, draws the foul, goes to the line. That foul's going to be on McGee, his second. Alert play by Nover. Matt is not fast, Laz, but he's very positive in his, uh, his uh, step and his aggressiveness toward the basket. He's been the best player for Indiana. He doesn't hesitate here. He just goes up with it to draw the foul. But as you commented, Chuck, Ch Cheney fell away on that shot. And of course, it came up short. He's got a, his best shot is when he goes toward the basket. It looked like he's trying to force that shot now and making him one of nine from the field. First point of the second half for Indiana as Cheney, Nover, and Anderson all in there for Indiana. Nover sends the second up, down on the well, and out. Nover is also a senior, but he's a junior by eligibility. So he'll have another year. He'll be back next year. 30-29. Indiana with a one-point lead. Douglas, as you hear some of the fans on this side call defense, inside against Nover, tipped up and over the back. Eli goes, and Eli commits his second foul. The two things talked about at the half were the block out and, uh, and the offense trying to get more points. There you saw the block out finally coming together. Wisconsin got too many easy shots with their seven offensive rebounds in the first half. Now with the three big ones we mentioned inside, it's Meeks and Bailey outside for Indiana. Anderson, there's the post, tries to get inside, and the loose ball is picked up by Webster. Who else? He will go baseline to baseline if you give him the chance. He is very, very quick. To Douglas. They clear out the middle. That just sort of sets it up for Webster. McGee. Pass recovered by the Badgers. McGee. Indiana playing some pretty good defense, not giving up the lane. Exactly, making that shot clock run down. Webster wants to go one on one. Cheney's moving his feet well. Anderson. Forced shot as Indiana gets the board and the ball. Right through the hands of Cheney and Meeks, recognizing that he made a bad pass very quickly back on defense. Good defense by Indiana. Great defense preventing Finley from getting position. Well, Bailey was bumped on the arm, no call. Tough shot, though, as yep. one on three. Nobody there to get the rebound. Indiana just out of sync on that offense. It's a bad pass by Jamal Chuck because even if Cheney would have gotten the ball, he still couldn't have got that shot away. So no sense risking that pass if you're not going to be able to score anyway. Indiana. 
chasing through now. They're not switching the guards in this half. They were switching virtually everything off the top in the first half last. Step out by Cheney, and there is a switch as uh, Bailey went right on to Finley. Okay. Webster lets it fly. Rebound to Meeks. To Bailey for three. Only two, says Tom Rucker. It's all right. He's back on track. Let's hope. As Indiana gets a three-point lead, they look real good uh, form on that shot. To Finley. Now Webster. Oh, he's got it cleared out. He's got a solo there against Bailey, but Indiana Cheney comes back over and adjusts on Finley. Webster. Blocked by Anderson. Great hand on the ball by Eric. Gets it right back. Webster just all over the court. The 45 second clock yep. went off just as he let it go. So it would have counted, but again, two fine defensive performances by Indiana. Bailey knocked out of his hands out of bounds. Well, we have 14.47 left and a timeout. Indiana with a three-point lead, 32-29. And we'll be back after these messages. 29. That's the score. There's the time remaining. A real huddle around the Indiana bench that time. Pencil and paper was out. Ron Felling talking to his guards, Jamal Meeks and Greg Graham. And uh, what, uh, diagramming something no, just it's on the piece of paper? It's what? the guards' jobs to get that ball into the scores in a position where they can score. And that's the tough part. You just can't give them the ball when they're open. you got to get it to them when they're in a position to score. And that's what Indiana's been having trouble with here in this first half. Cheney tries to get a block and instead draws a foul. Anderson in good position to screen for a shot by Cheney. But the foul is on Eli. One of the signs of Indiana getting the ball in positions to score early in the season was the amount of free throws that they got. When you get the ball in scoring position, that's when you're going to get fouled a lot. And over the last few games, Indiana has not shot a lot of fouls, which means they're not getting the ball in, with chances to score. Oh, there's the step. And the foul. That's going to send Graham to the line. And I think they're going to call Grant Johnson for that one. They are. Johnson's first foul. Let's look. Now, this is more of an individual move instead of being set up by the pass. But Graham sees the left uh, side open and makes the drive in. There's a shot fake and then the switch. Finley can't get him, and now here comes the foul. So there's an example of how as you move to the basket to score, that's when the fouls will occur. Well, that was a costly switch by Wisconsin. Really not necessary because the ball hadn't been placed on the floor last. Guy's tendency, though, is to always try to get back to his own man. And uh, it's the worst time to do that, of course, is when the guy's ready to score. Look at Anderson getting that offensive rebound. And there's a foul, a grab, and that's going to go on Finley. Well, that's going to be a jump ball. Well, they call it a jump ball? Right in front of the Good Indiana speech. bench. Yep. And yep. Coach Knight agrees with you, Chuck. That should have been a foul. But uh, Rucker's going to call a jump ball possession to Indiana. All right, right back to Graham. Bounce pass. Safest pass on the court. It's the hardest one to intercept. It can be difficult to uh, gather in, too. It seems the taller you are, the harder it is to get that bounce pass that could be down around your knees. Bailey takes it right to the middle. They call him for an offensive foul. Sid Rodeheffer makes that call. A lot of motion under the basket on that one, but uh, Rodeheffer calls it against Bailey. His second. His second personal. So Indiana with just a three-point lead, 30, uh, make that four-point lead, 33-29. It's a sort of a trap scare on Webster that time, but they're able to get it out without any trouble. Here's Finley, works on Bailey, gets a screen. Now Webster. There's Cheney stepping out to stop the dribble. That's that's the advantage of that, and the advantage of the help, Laz, in well, a defense. All right, the defense is really picking up high. Finley uh, spoils that, though, making a tough shot. Shot clock was down under 10. 
Finley with his 11th point. It's 33-31. Indiana by two. Bailey. To Anderson. Underneath. Misses the shot. Out of bounds, Indiana. Now well, that was blocked by yep. Finley. Coach Knight wants goaltending. Because Graham got up quickly that time. Watch this play inside. Graham's open. He goes up quickly. There's Finley. That looked like he was off the backboard. That's where sure Graham even noticed that. But no call made. Wisconsin playing tough against the Hoosiers. 12 minutes, 42 seconds left. 33-31 Indiana. Cut by Graham. And no place to go. Back out on top to Meeks. Still time on the shot clock, 14 seconds. Anderson, and that's not going to fall. Look at Bailey chase it out. That was a great play there. A tough rebound to come up with. Gives Indiana a new possession. Anderson. Oh, that on a Sparky. <laughs> Look at that. He got cut off on the baseline and reached right back in there. That's on the highlight tape right there. Bob Knight looks over to his coach, and I imagine he's saying, if he can hit a shot like that, how come he can't hit some right, of the others? Right. How come the easy ones don't go in? 35-31. Indiana's lead back to four. They have led by six. And on the line, good defense. We have a timeout. Kelly checks in for the Badgers, but with 11.45 left on the clock, it's 35-31 Indiana. Back after these messages, this is the Raycom Sports Network. Indiana with a four-point lead and the ball following the Wisconsin turnover. There's the shooting. She's two of seven for Indiana, and, uh, and one of those was a, was a once-in-a-lifetime shot. And once again, Meeks trying to go inside with the pass, and uh, this time Cheney once again can't hook up. Four already here in the second half in the turnover department for Indiana. Brian Kelly is a freshman, and he is a bulky young man. He's posting on Cheney right now. See what Shell does against Bailey. There's Kelly. And a whistle. And that's going to be a foul against Indiana. They call on Greg Graham. His second. Gets a hand in on the drive. And the second team foul against the Hoosiers here in the second half. We played nine minutes. Four-point Indiana lead. Shell looks. Webster lets it fly. That's off everything except the glass. Now Indiana. Cut by Bailey. Feed to Anderson. And a foul. He'll go to the line. Took a little bit too long to get that play up to the basket. That's the right idea, though, just to go up strong. A couple good passes here. Watch Cheney. Then uh, Bailey gets the double team. He dishes back to Anderson. That's just power basketball. When you get the ball that close to the hoop, you got to go up with it. Sometimes you are going to get that jump ball call, but more than likely you're going to get the foul as Johnson picks up his second. I mean, that's always been a trademark of Indiana to take advantage of what the other team gives you. They made two good passes there and then go up with the shot. We just haven't seen that type of aggressive offense in the ball game today. Anderson with 10, above his Big Ten average of nine, and a little bit below his season average of 10 and a half. 37-31, Indiana Finley, and there's gonna be a hand check called against Greg. Graham, his third. Finley's caused some defensive problems for Indiana. He's quick, so you got to play him up tight, but he's tall, so he can get a shot over a smaller player. Back out to Kelly. He gives it up, and then back to Webster. Inside ten and a half, knocked away. Here comes Indiana. And a foul, a reach around by Kelly as 
Cheney was making the break, and Bob Knight is up applauding the effort by Indiana. Sixteen foul against the Wisconsin Badgers. Cheney for three. That's not going to go. Anderson with a near foul coming over Johnson. And that, uh, after the applaud by Coach Knight, draws his wrath. Too quick on that shot. There weren't four passes made. And again, Cheney comes up short. Finley looking. Webster. No place to go. And back over. But how he got that pass through, I don't know. Finley misses everything. Johnson tries to rebound. Here comes Meeks. Lead. It will count. And he's fouled. Great, great lead from Meeks to Graham for the basket and the foul. Well, Jamal came up with that loose ball and then quickly got it down on the fast break. Watch him, he's got his head up, he's looking, he sees the play, gets it quickly to Graham again, no hesitation, he goes up, Kelly's out of position, Graham gets a chance for three, but Coach Knight really upset with Cheney for taking that shot too quickly on the offense. Johnson comes out, replaced by McGee. Billy Douglas back in the lineup for Wisconsin as Graham makes it a three-point play and his fourth point. We'll see Allen Henderson at the next dead ball opportunity. Nine and a half minutes left to play in the game. Indiana moving away. They lead now by nine in a very low scoring contest, 40-31. Wisconsin's only scored two points in the last eight and a half minutes, so the defense by Indiana is really what stretched this lead. Their offense hasn't been greatly affected. Webster stripped away by Cheney. Here he comes. And a foul. That will be on Douglas as Graham had an easy lane to the basket. Looks like uh, Coach looking for the intentional yep. foul, but that looked like he blocked it. A good play by Cheney. Look at the steal now. He's done two or three of these now in the second half. He's going to come. He spreads the lane out. See, it's hard to guard. There's the uh, foul. That was from the side by Douglas. That's a good foul. Well, to this stage in running a real risk of jinxing the whole thing, Indiana's shooting from the line is much better, Laz. Right, they seem to be concentrating a lot more. Uh, missed some crucial free throws at the end of the Michigan game, which could have uh, maybe given them a chance there toward the end. But you're right, Chuck, much better effort today. Henderson picks up the loose ball. And here's Meeks. Bailey, he's bumped. You've got to count the basket. You've got to count the basket. Well, you call that one. That's the outside official, Randy Drury, who makes the goaltending call. It took him a while to reach Tom Rucker, the other official, to make that call again. Jamal doing a nice job here in this half. He gets it over to Bailey. There's the foul. There's the goaltend. And there's Drury on the outside. Now, he's going to run in and get blocked out by a couple players. That's why you didn't signify the, the basket counted call right away. And Bailey connects from the line as well. He has five points. And the Hoosiers are up to 45-31, a 14-point advantage with 8.43 left to play. The Hoosiers almost gave up one to Finley right inside the free throw line. And there's a rush. That's not going to go. Look at Henderson's scrap for the ball. Out of bounds in the end. Uh, that's why Henderson's in there to get some of those boards. It was a weak side rebound. And he was able to keep it alive off of Douglas. Wisconsin wants a timeout. Eight and a half minutes left to play. And Indiana has extended to a 45-31 lead. We'll be back after these messages. In Remaining 45-31 is the score. And still in the lineup, the two seniors. Jamal Meeks, number 23, number 32, Eric Anderson. And so far, Laz, with the exception of a couple of breathers, for Meeks, uh, neither has given Coach a reason to take him out. No, nope, Meeks uh, started the game, played well. 
Anderson misses a shot there. Look at Bailey. He's finally coming to life, though. Oh, they've got a player all alone. This is Eli, and he travels. Oh, yeah, he did. He used an extra step there all alone. A little break there for Indiana. Indiana's outscored Wisconsin 16 to 2 in the last 10 minutes. They have been stuck on 31 for a long time. Reverse pass back to Graham. And a whistle. That's going to be an offensive foul called against Indiana, and I think it'll go against Allen Henderson. He's trying to get inside yep. position. That's the second against the Rebuff High School grad, and the freshman here at IU is averaging 11.7 points per game, and more importantly, seven and a half rebounds a game. He's just done an excellent job as a first year player. Chuck, we've played 12 minutes now in this second half. Look at that, just takes it right away from him. And Wisconsin has four points in the second half in 12 minutes of play. Graham dishes to Meeks for three. Nope. Back up. Block. Anderson. And he's fouled. Now that's some pretty good consistent play by Indiana. Now they're starting to pick it up now. And as uh, we mentioned, the halftime talk, uh, a little bit of block out and some defense. It's starting to pay off. Watch Henderson, that could have been a jump ball, but he just turns it into a turnover as he takes it right away from Eli. Graham's able to get it away. Jamal a little short on this shot. Bailey up quickly, Anderson to follow. Jamal taking a breather as Chris Reynolds checks back in for Indiana. And it's not gonna fall. You mentioned Jamal, uh, Chuck, one of the things Indiana does after the last senior game is to give these kids a chance to talk and we, we, we will be able to cover that to after today's ball game. So if you'd like to hear what Jamal and Eric Anderson had to say, please stay with us at the conclusion. We'll bring you that in a post game show. Seven minutes, 30 seconds left to play. Finley gives it up to Douglas, Douglas to McGee. As Wisconsin desperately tries to get something going to get back into this game. There's a three on the way by Webster. That would do it. McGee falls away. Foul against Indiana. Lockout not effective there because McGee was just able to reach right over the smaller Reynolds, grab that ball. They will say that McGee was in the act of shooting. So Carlton, a 55% shooter from the strike. A 6'7 sophomore out of Milwaukee will get two. McGee averages 11.1 points per game. Wisconsin has three in double figures. 46-32, here's Indiana. Cheney has not scored in the second half, has but four points in the game to Reynolds. Graham lets three go. That's off the mark. And the rebound is pulled down by Eli. Webster. And around it goes. Wisconsin still staying disciplined. Laz working their offense. They're running out of time now as we're under seven minutes. But now that defense of Indiana that's given them this lead is starting to falter a little. That'll put Indiana over the seven foul limit and now it should be a no it's it just, just a one six one. I thought the same thing last I didn't think the board had been brought up to date but it is that's the sixth against IU Let's shoot him the next time Wisconsin is over all limits they have committed their tenth Finley for three no and over the back Anderson is fouled by Eli who has picked up his fourth and the Hoosiers on that rebound foul will go to the line. A couple times now we've seen better block out. Eli picks up his fourth and it's resulted in some free throws. Notice how many more free throws Indiana's able to shoot here in the second half. They only got seven in the first half. They made all of them. But for this team to be effective, they've got to get to that line a lot. Well, I think Anderson's missed the last time is the only miss for Indiana at the line. Jamal back in again. 
Replaces Calvert. Calvert didn't feel very good at the first of the week. I was down here Monday doing some uh, work with Coach Knight, and he did not practice at all last. Uh, so it very possibly could be that he's suffering from a cold or a virus. 13 points for Anderson. Brian Good in the lineup now for Wisconsin, replacing Douglas. Good. On the far side of the floor, number 12, a senior from Rossville, Indiana. There's Good. Good three-point shooter incident. Blocked. Foul. Wisconsin's getting the ball inside. Easy pass for Good to make inside to Eli. And again, that second pass is easier and over comes to help. He leaves his man open. And a foul has to be committed to avoid the layup. So McGee back at the stripe again, misses this, his second miss in three attempts. He has four points. And misses this. Anderson tries to chase it down. Bailey across the wrist. It's going to get a little bit too one. aggressive, yeah. And so in a period of about two seconds, Bailey has picked up two fouls. His fourth. His fourth now. And I think at this stage, Knight may just be letting him play it out last. He's got five second half points, did not score at all in the first half. Eli from Harvey, Illinois. There are two players on this team from Harvey, Tracy Webster being the other. Harvey is a little town about uh, 60 miles southwest of Chicago. Bailey stripped away and a jump ball and possession will favor Wisconsin. Six minutes, ten seconds left. This has not been one of those kind of games that keeps you on the edge of your seat, Laz. It's been more or less the kind of a contest where you wonder whether or not Indiana is going to come to play. Well, they've uh, they've got a comfortable lead at 15 points, but you're right, Chuck. They they haven't gained it because uh, of, a, of a necessarily tough opponent. It's just they haven't played as well as we've seen them in previous games. Another foul here. Wisconsin goes to the line, but the thing that that concerns you is the big game that'll be coming up Sunday with Purdue. There's Yoder. Yeah, I admire Steve. I've known him since Ball State and a uh, very, very fine coach. Had to be a tough decision for him to announce his resignation midseason. But uh, if Indiana can continue to hold on here in this ball game, they face an all important test Sunday at Purdue. Uh, for a chance for the Big Ten yeah. Championship, depending on what Ohio State would do at Minnesota on Saturday. So Indiana will know their destiny by the time that game tips off. Well, Reynolds had the break of the balance of the ball on the first one and then hits nothing but net on the second shot for two points. He has four in the game. Inside entry to Eli for the slam dunk. Defense is let down here now at the end. They and a timeout is called. So with five minutes, 40 seconds left, last, it's 50-35, a 15-point lead for the Hoosiers. Back after these messages, this is the Raycom Sports Network. Remaining in the score, 50-35. Last just reached over and looked at my stat sheet and pointed to Galbert Cheney with just four points all in the first half. All right, he has not scored here in the second half. And he's not playing right now. He's out of the lineup. So Indiana breaks the press. Wisconsin. Bailey brings it right past Webster. Meeks underneath. Back up. 
Tipped away, out of bounds to Indiana. I think the Hoosiers got a break there. I think Nova touched the ball. But uh, Hoosier fans will not argue. Bailey looks, finds Anderson. And Indiana plays down the clock. Anderson up, and it falls. A shot he usually doesn't make, but it uh, takes a couple rolls on the rim before it goes in. Indiana leads now by 17. Eric having one of his better games scoring wise last in spite of all the problems of IU he has 15 points. Good for three. Oh you just don't give him that much room but there's Eric on the boards. He has played well all around today Chuck. <laughs> Chris Reynolds looks for Anderson makes the cut and travels. Now they're not going to count no basket travel. Eric doesn't think he. He's a little skipping. He there. did. But I like to see that aggressiveness to the basket. Webster picked up by Reynolds. Now picks up his dribble. Four minutes, 41 seconds left to play. 52 35 Indiana. Lob inside. Back to Webster for three. Yes. He's got great form on that shot. It's a little set shot. Doesn't jump real high. But he's deadly with it. Well, nine of his 11 points have come from three-point range. Reynolds, Bailey, Meeks. Entry to Nova. Good move by Matt Nova. That's the shot fake right there. How very important that is. Nova really playing a smart game today. I can't tell you how many times in practice he works on that move. And here's where it pays off. <laughs> Offensive foul, says Rucker into Bailey. Bailey really took a blow on that as Webster was in high gear. Uh, he was in good position all the way. He anticipated that move by Webster. It's already set as Webster comes around. Shielded out by his old man. He couldn't see Damon setting up. Jamal Meeks comes out. That probably will be the last time we see him in the lineup. Anderson or Henderson is back in, as is Greg Graham. And both seniors come out right now. And they sit next to each other on the bench. Graham. Oh, great feed. Up, and he'll go to the line. Well, that's just alert play by Alan Henderson because the pass was really passed over the first time. He had no chance of reaching it. And, and got it right back to him. Put it right back in his hand. Like he gets his third. There's the pass. Henderson's got it right back into the man it was supposed to go to. And as Nova tries the stuff, he gets fouled, makes the first free throw. Matt averages six points. He has 11 in one of his finer offensive games and he's played a pretty good game defensively too. Now he's doubled his average with 12. 56-38. Hoosiers up by 18 with three and a half minutes to play. Finley. Oh there's a good move by Finley. Goes high misses. Henderson clears. Graham to Matt and two more for the big senior junior eligibility from Chester. That's pretty good execution of fast break. And Nover did a nice job avoiding that charge as he came laterally to get that shot away. Look at the defense really getting sticky now. 38 points is all Wisconsin has. Up to Nover again. You know, that's one thing you like to see, Lass. When a young man goes up, comes down with the ball, goes right back up again. Doesn't have to gather himself right. up. Webster for three. Tracy Webster with 14 points. 12 of those on three-point efforts. Not going to go. Tipped away out of bounds to Wisconsin. Substitutions. We're going to see Larry and Lindemann. The two Todds. Todd Lindemann for Matt Nover, who gets a standing ovation. And Damon Bailey is replaced by Leary. Okay, 16 points for Nover. One of his best games this year, and when Indiana needed it, too. 
real steady in today's game. Indiana by 19. Step out by Lindemann. Now Webster. And you can expect he'll be right in three-point range. There it is again. Henderson gives it right back to Reynolds. Up to Graham. Two minutes. Lindemann. Lindemann's taken a post. Let's see how strong he is as he fights off McGee. Sets the screen. Now steps into the post again. Leary. And deflected out of bounds. One-handed passes. Now this team does a lot of that, Laz. That, I can remember when, when you guys played, I... I always saw two-handed passes. It's hard to control that pass, and it, it's easy telegraph, too. Henderson, little pump fake, put it right past Eli. Henderson's first points in the second half. McGee gives it up. Good for three. That won't go. Henderson clears it out. Here's Leary. And at 14, they want it to go to the big fella, Lindemann. Crowd's calling for Lindemann. Wisconsin not going for the ball. Now they do. Good. Comes across and fouls. Shot won't count. I don't know if you saw it or not. There's a good shot of Ryan. Good. Senior from Rossville picks up his first. It's like Reynolds uh, got hit in the shoulder there as Bailey comes in to replace him. Tim Garl on the Indiana bench, that left shoulder. Like he just got a bump there. But Graham sends the second up, and it's also good. He has eight, 64 41. Indiana's lead is 23. 58 seconds inside a minute. Oh, Webster just makes the divide, just splits the Indiana defense, but throws it away off a Wisconsin bat. Up to Leary, 48 seconds. Leary will fire three. No. Rebound, Henderson. Back up. No. Tipping the ball, it'll be whose ball? Indiana ball. A lot of hands in there on that one, Lance. Indiana's crashing the boards now and are pretty successful at keeping that ball alive. Just couldn't get it to drop. Well, McGee and Lindemann are having a nice battle. There's Damon. Not too much scoring. Fans wanting to shoot, but he's out of position. Inside to Graham. Back up. He'll go to the line with 32 seconds remaining. on Brian Good, his second. So Graham with nine, threatening to move into double figures. He averages 13 and a half. And has hit for his 10th point. So Indiana has Anderson with 15, Nover with 16, and Graham with 10 to lead the Hoosier scoring. 66-41, off the mark. Here's Leary. To Graham. Back down to the post goes Lindemann. There's the kick. Up. High arching shot, no good. Rebound. Pulled down by Eli. Good. Steps around Bailey. Drops to McGee. Good again. Inside. And blocked. And Indiana comes away with a victory as that last rebound was pulled down by Todd Lindemann. Got banged on the ear at the same time. There's Bob Knight down with his final handshake with Steve Yoder. We've come to the end of the game, and Indiana has won it handily, 66-41. to 41. But it wasn't always that way, and we'll be back to talk about it after these messages. Only a few will ever
never see the inside. Indicate how things went in the first half, and for that matter, a couple of stages here in the second half of the game. Laz, Indiana led by only two, 29-27 at the break. They led by as many as six in the first period, but could just never pull away. And once again, that shooting percentage was a nemesis. Right, third straight game now. Indiana's been in the 60s with 66 points today. One of the most explosive offensive teams Indiana's had but yet uh, struggling here. But look at that defense, 41 points they give out to Wisconsin, only 14 second-half points by the Badgers today. Okay, Laz, now for our important Napa part of the game. After that shaky start, we've got to go with the defense there. Wisconsin's uh, season low was 51 points, so Indiana handled them 10 points below that today, 41 points. Give your car the starting power it needs. Get the Napa legend, the better battery. There it is. We'll be back to wrap it up after these messages. Corn growers. Rootworm protection has taken on a whole... Corn Bob Knight. Let's have something from you for the last time here. Let's go. <laughs> Knight has just asked for recognition from the seniors in the IU Pep Center. I think that uh, I think that we all agree that we'd put those of you that were seniors up against any full pep band in the country, and you'd come out on top. We have we have a group of kids that you see kind of out here that uh, do a lot of things, and you may wonder where the hell they all come from. And and uh, but they're our managers, and our managers do a great, great job for us and, and have over all the years that I've been here. And we have an unusual number of senior managers here tonight, and I'm going to introduce them and would appreciate it if you'd hold your applause till I get done with them. These kids have just done a great job. We've had managers go on. Now we got a couple now that are millionaires already. I mean, that's what, I don't know whether it started here or not. I can't quite figure that out. but. Uh, uh, they've done a great job for us going on, and they've represented Indiana basketball extremely well, just as our players have. So if I could start with our senior managers. Uh, from Teaneck, New Jersey, Lawrence Frank. Lawrence. All right. That's all. Just... From, from Carmel, Indiana, Joe Arity. From Jeffersonville, Indiana, Brent Thompson. From Lakeville, Minnesota, Chris O'Hagan. From Bedford, Indiana, Troy Boshears. Troy. And from Brazil, Indiana, John Stuckey. And from Syracuse, Indiana, Mark Johnson. I think nobody, nobody can really appreciate, boys, uh, what you kids have done over four years, what you've meant to all the coaches and the players. And we got a little different thing that we're going to do for you this year. When the season's all over, uh, the players are going to treat you to a barbecue where they do all the cooking and buy all the food. So I think that... Uh, Okay, we're going to have to leave on the Raycom Sports Network while this is in progress. Final score is 66 to 41. The next game, Indiana travels to West Lafayette to meet the Purdue Boilermakers. This coming Sunday at 2:30 on the Raycom Sports Network. Our thanks to John Laskowski. This is Chuck Marlowe, and this has been a copyrighted presentation of the Big Ten Conference. Don't worry, here on TTV4, Mike Goldberg back live here at Assembly Hall. We will definitely celebrate with the seniors tonight. It's all coming up on a special edition of the Union Federal Post Game Show. We're going to miss immensely the two players that I think you have really enjoyed watching play over the past four seasons. There are two players that have uh, 
We'll have a chance next week to play in the fourth and second NCAA tournament. You told me to get in here. Hey, you're fine. What do you want me to do now? Just go right down the coach? Or? Okay. This weekend to play for the third Big Ten Championship. Uh -huh. recognize your thanks as you give it to them. They joined a long list of great senior players that we've had over the years. Uh, Eric is going to graduate at the end of this semester, and Jamal will graduate at the end of the first session of summer school. I introduce them alphabetically. That's not too hard for me tonight. Eric Anderson and Jamal Mason. Sure. Job keeping me in a straight line over the past four years. Uh, Mike, thanks, Mike Goldberg back here at Assembly Hall. It is indeed a special night. Let's turn the program back over to Chuck Marlow. Chuck? Okay, Mike, thank you. Tonight's salute to the seniors is brought to you by Toyota. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Down on the microphone right now is senior Eric Anderson from Chicago, Illinois. Played at DeSales High School. Let's go down and hear what he has to say. There's a few people over the summer we have jobs and I want to thank Gary Crum for Steel Beard Electric for, for helping me out and giving me a job over the summer. Uh, the guys at Crosstown Barbershop, you know, they, they've done a hell of a job with this receding hairline. <laughs> also, I'm, I'm kind of a moron with cars and uh, Newt over there at Newt's Marathon at 17th Street. One of the best mechanics there is. There, there's so many people that I've met in the last four years, I, I want to thank them all. Uh, and I've learned that I guess I talk a lot because I've met an awful lot of people. And, uh, and there's, there's, my, there's my best fan over there. This guy is on me from the beginning of the game to the end. That's Al over there. You guys ain't gonna believe it. These guys in this section over there are the hardest on us than anybody in here, believe me. Am I right, Al? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanna thank Dr. Sanglang for cooking all those meals, the Sayre family for always having us over and helping us get away. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, I was blessed with uh, a lot of gifts in my life and, and most of all I have uh, just what I think is just an outstanding and loving family. And uh, they come and support me to all my games. And, uh, you know, they're all pretty much here tonight. And what I have is just one of the strongest human beings uh, uh, in my family. She's our leader. And uh, she's carried me for 22 years almost, you know, on her back. And uh, she's got to be pretty tired by, uh, by now. And that's my mom, Rita. I love you, mom. All right, that's it. I'm going to go. Uh, here's Jamal. Thank you very much.
Thank you. First of all, I want to give honor to God who um, uh, made all this stuff possible for me to be at Indiana University and be a part of this program. Second of all, I want to thank my family for uh, driving six hours uh, through the bad weather to come down and see me play. Uh, I like to first start with my dad who uh, stays on my case all the time and, and <laughs> tells me to stay after it all the time. Uh, my mom, we call her Mama Buzz. If Buzz is around, she stays on my case too. <laughs> I like to thank my little brother, Blake, who always has uh, kind words and, and encouragement for me. Uh, my sister's not here right now, but uh, I know she's tried to listen to the static radio to hear me. Uh, thank you for all your calls and, and encouragement and, and all the things you guys have done to help me. Thank you. I want to thank the coaching staff who uh, allowed me to come here and, and play basketball, uh, starting off with Coach Knight and all the assistant coaches who get us out here before practice and work on the things we need to uh, do for the upcoming game. I uh, also want to thank Tim Garl, who has about 17 jobs besides a trainer, uh, travel agent, uh, trainer, all the, all the things, weight trainer, everything. Also, I want to thank uh, Frank Exton, who's our weight coach who got up every morning with us at 6.30, uh, lifting weights and, and the running program. Also, I'd like to thank all the doctors uh, who come in and uh, help us with all our broken bones and uh, aches and everything. Thanks. Also, I'd like to thank the doctor's wives for having us over for dinner. And, you know, as you can tell, I don't miss too many meals. <laughs> Also, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the academic staff for staying on me all the time. Uh, Buzz, calling the early morning calls. Get up and go to class. Get up. <laughs> Thanks for those calls. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the uh, tutors who help uh, all the players on our team and uh, get us prepared for the uh, upcoming tests. And, and I really appreciate all your help. One tutor I'd like to uh, call out is uh, Bobby Robertson, who uh, who's always there when I need her and comes out and, and gives me a lot of help. Thanks, Bobby. Also, I want to thank these 13 guys, 12 guys that, that have been in the trenches with me for uh, some of them three or four years and others one or two. Uh, thanks, guys, for the memories. Hopefully we have you know, a lot more coming up. Also, I'd like to thank the Alexander family for you know, their summer job and, and being such great friends. Thank you. I'd like to thank Newt and his family for having us over for you know, a steak every now and then and uh, keeping that car of mine running. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Newt. I know you guys got to uh, get home and go to work in the morning, so I, I cut it down a little bit. Also, I'd like to thank Dr. Sangalang, who uh, gives us calls of encouragement, cooks us lovely meals. I'd like to thanks for all the crab legs and uh, beef fried rice and all those thing things. Thanks. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not going to stay up here too much longer, so whoever I forgot, I'm sorry. I love you, and thank you for everything. The Hoosiers of Indiana, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, that's it. Tonight's salute to the seniors has been brought to you by Toyota. I love what you do for me. Toyota. An interesting statistic, Mike and Ted. Indiana outscored Wisconsin from the free throw line tonight, 26 to 5. Now back to you for the post game. Well, thank you, gentlemen. It was always a, uh, a splendid job tonight. I'll tell you what, these guys eat well, don't they? <laughs> it sounds like. It sounds like they thank everybody in Bloomington. But uh, very special special uh, time for the guys that have, uh, you know, 
laid their uh, hearts and souls out there on that basketball court to get an opportunity to go out and tell everybody thank you. And hopefully we'll have a couple more games, to, or maybe five or six more games to watch them play. From talking to Eric Anderson and Jamal Meeks both all season long, they do not want to stop it here. they got a lot of career left here at Indiana. Let's take a break. We'll come back and do our usual Union Federal Post Game Show. Ted Kitchell and I standing by for that live at Assembly Hall.